So number 14 then for 12 marks here in this specimen paper. Lines, you've got the equation of two lines. You've, first of all, for five marks, show the intersect and find the point of intersection. Well, first thing would be, I'll give them parameters to work with. I'll use mu, lambda and mu. So now I'll need to rewrite these. So for the first line, I think I'll separate the x's by giving them names 1 for, his, for the first line. That'll be 3 lambda minus 6, or negative 6 plus 3 lambda, whichever. And y1 will be, now that's negative lambda, but it'll be taking that across 1 minus lambda. And z1 will be, taking that across as 2, that'll be 2 plus 2 lambda. Same for this line x2 I'll call it. x2 will be 4 mu but negative 5 plus 4 mu or 4 mu minus 5. y2 will be that's a mu that will be negative 4 plus mu and z2 will be that's just 4 mu. Doing that, putting them into parametric form gives you the first mark. Well intersect means that the coordinates should be the same for both equations at that point of intersection, if they intersect. However, they'll always have the same x-y pair at some point on the line. So I'll just find what that is first of all. So taking the x's, I've got this. Negative 6 plus 3 lambda should give the same answer as this one, which is negative 5 plus 4 mu. So bringing that across, 3 lambda minus 4 mu should equal 1. There's one equation. Substitute the y coordinates. 1 minus lambda should equal negative 4 plus mu. Right, I'll bring that over but read it backwards. So lambda minus mu, bringing that over, lambda plus mu, I should have said, will equal 5. There's a second equation. So I could get rid of mu by doing one of them and four of them. So that's what I'll do. I'll have one of one and I'll have 4 of 2. And if I do that, I'll have this. I'll have 3 plus another 4 of these making 7 lambda. They will cancel out and I'll have 1 plus 4 of them making 21. So lambda equals 3. Putting it into 2. 3, lambda's 3. 3 plus mu should equal 5. So mu equals 2. I should have said, forming the simultaneous equations 1 and 2 in two of the variables as a mark, and finding the resulting values of the parameters as a mark. But now you've got to demonstrate that these lines do in fact intersect. There will be a point in this line with those coordinates and a point in that line with those coordinates. However, I'll need to check if the z-coordinates are the same. So Z1, whoops, here it is, should be 2 plus 2 lots of 3, which is 8. Z2, according to this one, should be 4 lots of mu, so 4 lots of 2, which is 8. Well, there you are. Z1 equals Z2, which means lines L1, and I'll just refer to them by their names, and L2 intersect. Doing that gets you a mark. So the final mark now is just, so what are the other two coordinates? I can use it either of them. So I'll just use x. So x1, which will do the same for them both, is negative 6 plus 3 lots of mu, which was of lambda, which was 3. So you've got negative 6 plus 9, which is 3. y1, working out y1, should be 1 minus lambda, which was 3, which is negative 2. I've got z already which means that the point of intersection is going to be the point 3, negative 2, 8. That's the fifth mark. Part B then, for three marks, find the equation of the plane containing these two lines. Well, if the two lines lie in a plane, then that means 
the cross product of their direction vectors must be perpendicular to the plane and that's what you want for the equation of a plane, the perpendicular vector. Well let's just sort out first of all what the direction vectors are. Readily identifiable by the bottom parts there. 3, negative 1, 2. And for this one, 4, 1, 4. Remember, those being the parts that multiply the parameter. So that means that the normal to the plane should be formed by u1 cross u2, the vector product. And you can work out the vector product using the determinant. I, j, k. So we've got 3, negative 1, 2, and 4, whoops, 1, 4. Too much in the way there. So that will give me i times, I think I'll just set it out carefully to don't make a mistake with the arithmetic. It's minor is this one here, negative 1, 2, 1, 4, minus j times, it's minor is th 3, 2, 4, 4, don't leave myself much room there, and k multiplied by its minor, which is knocking out that row and column, 3, negative 1, 4, 1. So what is that then? Main diagonal minus the opposite diagonal, minus 4, minus 2 is minus 6, this one, 12, Minus 8 is 4, that's minus, so minus 4j. And this one, 3, but minus minus, which is plus 4, which is 7, so plus 7k. And the first two marks were for using the vector product to get the normal. So this part here, it seems to imply going as far as this first part of the evaluation. And then getting it for the second mark. So I'll just write it this way here. Negative 6, negative 4, 7. So the equation of the plane then. I've got the normal and a point on it. Well, the two lines lay in the plane, so the point of intersection lies in the plane. But so does the points that they lie through, they pass through individually as well, which can be identified from the top here. For line 1, its direction vector is 3, negative 1, 2, and it passes through the point, whatever has been subtracted, minus 6, 1, 2. So the equation of the plane is going to be n dot r, r being the general point, is n dot a, a being any point, or the position vector rather, on the plane, of a point on the plane. So that's negative 6, negative 4, 7, x, y, z, is negative 4, 6, negative 4, 7 times, and then pick a point. So if you pick the point of intersection, it'd be 3, negative 2, 8. But if you put in negative 6, 1, 2, or if you put in negative 5, negative 4, 0, you'd still get the same answer. So that's negative x minus 4y plus 7z. And I'll just have to multiply this out. Negative 18 plus 8, whoop, plus 56. So that's 10 coming off, that's 46. So negative 6x minus 4y plus 7z equals 46 for the equation of the plane. And then part C for the final four marks for this, what's the acute angle between this new line, line 3, and the plane that you just found in part B? Give your answer in degrees, correct to two decimal places. Well, the angle between, if you've got a plane, the angle between a line and a plane would be the angle between the line and its perpendicular projection onto the plane. But since you know the normal to the plane, you could find that angle instead, the angle between the line and the normal, and then the angle you actually want would simply be the complement of it, whatever it takes to add it to make 90. So what have I got? I've got the normal and I've got the direction vector. Well, the direction vector of that line, reading from the bottom, is 2, 4, negative 1. The normal to the plane came from the part before, but you can read it from the coefficients of x, y and z. Negative 6, negative 4, 7. So to find the angle between them, you're just going to use the scalar product to find the angle between two vectors. So that would be cos, if I call that theta, 
cos theta would be u dot n over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of n. So it's just a case of working that all out. u dot n equals, I should have said the first mark came from selecting the two appropriate vectors. And the next mark will be for working out these three parts. So u dot n will be negative 12, minus 16, minus 7, which is a bit of a pest because that's going to be negative 35. So remember those are positive amounts. So that means the cosine is negative. So this evaluation will give you an obtuse angle. But there's a way around that. Magnitude of u is going to be the square root of squaring these 4 plus 16 plus 1. So that's root 21. And the magnitude of n is going to be squaring these 36, 16 and 49, which is unfortunately 101. Now getting these three values gets you the next mark. Now, if you put those straight into this, you'll get a negative value for the cosine, so the answer will be obtuse. The way around that would just be to say this then. For the acute angle, you would take the absolute value of it, ignoring the negative. So for this one, I'm going to say that's going to be 35 over root 21, root 101. In which case, theta will be inverse cos, and that will turn out acute, of that 35 over root, we'll just put a big root, 21 times 101. And putting that into your calculator gives you 40.538 and so on. 40.538 and so on degrees. So the angle that you want then, the angle between the line and the plane, so I'll just put that required angle then, required angle will be 90 minus that, 538 and so on. So that will be 4, 9, and I'll drop to 4, and that'll be 6, and that'll be 2, and so on. But to two decimal places, that's 49.46 degrees. And I should have said, getting that acute angle to the normal was a mark, and getting the required angle to the plane, the complement of it, is the final mark. And making sure you've got two decimal places. Now, you could have done something else that would have saved a little bit of work. If this expression gives you the cosine of this acute angle, and the angle you actually want is the, the complement of it, you know that the cosine of an angle is equal to the sine of its complement. So you could have said at this point, if cos theta equals that, then the sine of the angle you actually want is this, so that the actual angle would have been the inverse sine of that. And you could put a little note here in that case, in which case you could have said the angle you want, which I'll just call it phi, is going to be 90 minus theta. So working out the sine of phi will give you the answer. And indeed typing that in gives you 49.461 and so on, which rounds straight away to 49.46 degrees. So doing it that way, I presume, would be getting one mark for changing the angle and then the other mark for carrying through the calculation.